Hi, I'm Manny. And I'm Cheryl, and welcome to my sewing room. I had a lot of comments about the cat quilt block video. Many of you requested a dog quilt block, and you were very specific about the type of dog quilt block that I you wanted. I wanted to have a Labrador Retriever. So after thinking about it a lot... I had a Labrador Retriever. Her name was Rebecca. I decided to do a very classic quilt block called the Scotty Dog. She was such a good doggie. I know, hun. So let's get started on this cute little Scotty dog. Because I had so many requests for the cat and dog uh, quilt block, I wanted to recommend to you cat and dog lovers a book that I have. It's called Quilted Cats and Dogs by Annie's Quilting, and the designer is Chris Malone. It has 13 cat and dog projects in it, and they are just adorable. Some of them are pieced squares and then others are applique that you either do machine applique or hand applique. And then on the back here some more pictures. And what I really love is this sewing machine with the cat peeking out. So there again it's worth the money and I think you'll have a great time with this book. Now where can you get this book? I purchased mine at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. You probably can get it on Joanne.com and I'm sure you can get it on Amazon.com. The finished size of this quilt block is a 12 and a half inch square. You'll need one quarter yard of background fabric. So you'll need nine two and a half inch squares, five three inch squares, one three and a half inch square and then you'll need two strips that are one and a half by ten and a half inches and two more strips that are one and a half by twelve and a half inches. For the dog you'll need one eighth of a yard. You'll need nine two and a half inch squares, five three inch squares, and one three and a half inch square. To make the half square triangles you're going to need three background fabrics and three dog fabrics and they are all six pieces three inches square. Take your background fabric which whichever is the lightest fabric is what you want to do on this. My background fabric is lighter than the dog. So now you're going to draw a line from corner to corner. Then you're going to stitch on each side of that line a quarter of an inch away on both sides. Then after you've done that, you're going to cut right on that center line that you drew before. So you wind up with two out of each three inch set that you cut. Once you get your half square triangles cut, then you want to go to your ironing board and press the seam on the back side. Then unfold and press on top and make sure you're pressing this seam towards the darkest fabric. Now you're going to square this block to two and a half inches square. On your ruler is a diagonal line. And here I'm going to cut within the two and a half inch square lines. What I do to help me out so that I don't lose my place is I'll just take little post-its or you can take tape, whatever is convenient for you and I'm placing it on the two and a half inch lines so that I could see the area that I need to keep it in. So now put the diagonal line right on this diagonal line. Make sure it's straight and make sure that you have fabric extending out all four sides because we're going to cut this down to a nice perfect two and a half inch square. So cut that way and then go over and cut this way. And I cut right into my paper, but that's okay. Now, take your block, take this corner, and turn it to there. Do the same thing again. Place the diagonal line on that center line, but this time you're going to place the two and a half inch line here and here 
right on the edge of your fabric. Once you have it lined up, then cut the last two sides and you're going to do this to all six of your half square triangles and there you go. To make the neck you'll need one three and a half inch square of background fabric and two three and a half inch squares of your dog fabric. On the background fabric draw a line again like we did previously on the other half square triangles from corner to corner so draw that line. Take the front sides of a background and dog fabric and line them up. Then on each side of this line you're going to stitch again a quarter of an inch away. After you've done your stitching then cut right on that diagonal line and you'll wind up with two half square triangles that look like this. Turn it over and on the back you're going to draw a diagonal line from the background fabric corner to the dog fabric corner. Bring front sides together of your other three and a half inch square. Don't worry if it doesn't line up perfectly. Then again stitch one quarter inch away on each side of the center line. Stitch here and there. Then when you're done stitching cut it in half and you'll wind up with two pieces that look like this but you only need one so put the other one away save it for another block. Now you're going to take the diagonal line on your ruler and place it here and we're going to square it to two and a half inches. So I've got my line on there make sure you have fabric extending around all four edges then trim this side off and then go and trim this side off. Take this corner and bring it over here and place it on the diagonal line. This time you're going to make sure that the two and a half inch line is right there and that your diagonal line is also right on there. Then when you get done cut and then cut and here is your neck. Place your pieces in this order that you see here. There is a half square, half square triangle here, here, one up here, down here, and down here, and then here is the neck. Everything else are full two and a half inch squares. Now you want to stitch all of your blocks together. So you're going to do a row at a time. So this is first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. You're going to use a one quarter inch seam on each of your squares. Bring front sides together starting in row one and stitch one quarter inch. Unfold. Bring the second, the third one, excuse me, on top, stitch one quarter inch and unfold it and continue down the row stitching one quarter inch until you get all the pieces in that row together. Then go to the next row, the next one and so forth until each row is stitched together. After you've stitched your blocks together now you want to press your seams. So each row the seams are going to be pressed in the opposite direction but before you press the seams in the opposite direction first just press the seams flat and you've got the back side of that row facing up and you just lift and flip it under lift and flip it under now you want to press the seams on top and you're going to start at this end here and you're going to keep the row lifted with the other hand now push against those seams and that's how quick it can go. So you're going to do that to each row. Now I've just finished pressing all of my rows so it should look like this right now from the front side. But now you need to turn it over and make sure all of your seams are going in the opposite direction in each row. The seams here are going this way then this way, this way, 
this way, and then this way. Next step is to stitch the rows together. So bring rows one and two front sides together. And you're going to pin and stitch a quarter of an inch along this edge. But before you do that, you want to match your seams. The seam on the top should be in the opposite direction than the seam on the bottom. They should be real close. It should feel really flat in there. So then go ahead and place a pin to hold. And do the same thing with all of the seams all the way across. Then stitch one quarter inch from this raw edge in all the way across. After stitching each row on, verify that all the blocks are lining up with each other. For instance, when I was stitching these two rows together, I got them stitched, and this block on the end did not line up in this corner. And it turns out I hadn't squared it very well. So I took it out, fixed it, and now it matches in there. So verify as you go along because there's nothing more frustrating than to put an entire block together and because you overlooked one little block it throws the entire quilt block off. So next is to go ahead and add the next row. Bring front sides together, match your seams, pin and stitch, all the way across and do that for all of the remaining rows. One more thing I want to mention as you're stitching the blocks or excuse me the rows together after you stitched press the row on the back side then unfold and press the seam on top and I usually just have all my seams going in the same direction. When you are done stitching all the rows together and you've done all your pressing, now you need to square the block up because they never come out even. So that's why it's important before you put it into your finished project, you square it up. Ideally, this should come out to 10 and a half inches. So take your 12 inch square ruler. If you are gonna do a lot of quilting, you must have a 12 and a half inch square ruler. They are just wonderful. They really help keep everything even. So I'm laying my ruler out on top of my block and I can see I've got some sections that need to be trimmed off. It's a little jagged. So I'm gonna cut off anything that's sticking out past the 10 and a half inch line. So once you've got it lined up, let me just adjust this a little bit more. It's hard to see from where I'm standing here. Okay, so now you're going to trim one side up. I didn't need much off of this side. And then trim this side off. Now take this corner up here and bring it over there. So turn it. Now lay your 10 and a half inch lines on this side here and here. Lay them on those two previously cut edges. And then once you have them lined up, you're going to go ahead and trim it off. And there you go. To bring this finished block up to size 12 and a half finished, I'm going to add one and a half inch strips of fabric on all four sides. So first, stitch it on the top and bottom. And I cut my strips just a little bit longer than I need. That way I can trim it off to be an exact fit. So you would stitch on the bottom on the top first, stitch one quarter inch, then press the seams, then trim your corners off. After you've done that, then you would bring the side pieces on top on both sides and stitch a quarter of an inch, press, and then trim 
the corners off and square it up to size 12 and a half. I've just finished putting my border on it, so now my block is a 12 and a half inch square block. If you're going to make a large quilt with this particular block in your quilt and you're not quite sure how to get all your blocks to square up to the same size, I have a very detailed video on how to square up your block so that it will evenly fit into that quilt. So that link will be appearing at the very, very end of this video. There'll be a green screen at the end and you'll see the link on there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you even try to make this cute little Scotty dog. Now, if you did like this video, click on the old thumbs up button and click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to enter your email address and click on that little bell so you receive future email notifications about my latest video. I'm Cheryl and this is Manny. So glad you came to my sewing room. I'll see you next time and happy sewing!